Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and uh, today I want to talk about a Twitter application which has increased in popularity lately. I've been seeing a lot of people talk about it. wasn't quite sure what it was because the name is kind of weird. It's called Destroy Twitter, and uh, I thought people were trying to destroy Twitter, and I didn't know that it was an application at first, but I, I Googled it, and I said, oh, it's another Twitter application. So I looked at it briefly. I looked at the, the UI. It's like, eh, it looks okay. So the other day, I got a tweet. Somebody told me I should try that, just try destroy Twitter. And I was like, all right, let me go ahead and give this a shot. So I installed it, used it for a couple days, and I learned some things about it. And I was quite impressed with the feature set in the UI. And I want to show you guys some of the things that I learned and uh, some of the feature sets. Now, if you're interested in destroy Twitter, go to the website, which is destroytoday.com slash projects slash destroy Twitter. Here you'll find a link here right here in the middle that says click here to install destroy Twitter um, and what this is this is an Adobe Air app you saw me talk about twirl you saw me talk about TweetDeck you saw me talk about other Adobe Air apps Raptor the gaming social network application is Adobe Air it's a runtime environment for Adobe applications these are like web application using web widgets you know it's a whole that can be a whole video by itself but you click here to install, install, destroy Twitter. Now there's there's a couple versions here. You can get the 1.40 beta release, which is the official official beta release, and then there is a 1.43 beta pre-release. That's what I have installed here because here it here it here it comes. It gives you themes. Let me minimize this. Now this <laughs> is destroy Twitter, and if you've ever used the application, you probably have never seen this look and feel. But if you get version 1.4.3, head over to the Google Groups that I'll put in the show description. They have a list of, um, I believe they have pictures. I don't know if they have pictures or not. But when you download 1.4.3, there is a themes folder. Let me show you that briefly. And within that themes folder here, there are several files that you just double click to install a new theme. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because I know people are going to ask me, how did you change the look and feel? I just double clicked on one of these new themes. And it applies a new style sheet to destroy Twitter. I went with this uh, this one called Flight 404. And uh, I, I like the look and feel of that. So I'm going to go with that one. So destroy Twitter. This is this interface is nice. It's got a tab interface. It's got home. It's got replies. It's got saved. It's got search. Uh, it's got messages. And it's got sent. It's got all these tabs at the top and along the bottom. Now, I, I reviewed an application here called, um, called Twirl. Twirl has a multiple window uh, setup. And we've been pushing them to get a tabbed interface. This is exactly what I'm talking about. To have your replies on the tab, to have your saved Twitters. These are your your your, your favorite tweets that you've, you, you've marked as your favorite. And then you have search terms. Right now I have demo under search because today's the, the demo 09 or where startups talk about their new, um, their new products at a conference called demo. And then there's also my private messages and my sent DM messages, which I'm not going to show because they're private. <laughs> and at the bottom, you have your preferences, you have your accounts, and you have your people, and you have a way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on preferences so you can see some of the things that you can configure within Destroy Twitter. Uh, you can configure the frequency that you receive and send uh, from various aspects of Twitter. This is something that you probably used to if you use the Twitter API based client. You have to really throttle back and adjust your settings because there's an API limit on the amount of calls you can make. So in layman's terms, if you use the client too much, you can't use Twitter anymore. There's a limit. So you, you have the ability to throttle back and 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 basically remove uh, the frequency or decrease the frequency of requests that Twitter sends or do you send Twitter that way you won't get an API limit reach error you'll see that a lot there's a uh, open the startup logging automatically uh, hide the close these standard stuff now here's one that I think you guys are gonna be interested in it's called wider workspace and when I do this it switches from a one pane to a three pane interface now if you've used TweetDeck and you saw me talk about TweetDeck this is one of the cool things about TweetDeck it gives you a dashboard of what's going on on Twitter. So if I were to go back up here to home, you'll see now that I can see my home feed, I can see my replies, and I can see my direct messages on the right side, all in one pane. Now, this is very, very similar to TweetDeck. It's not as as flexible, but it gives you a one-stop shop view of your, of your home feed, your replies, 
and your direct messages all in one window. And that's an option. You don't have to do that. But if you go to preferences, you can set that to uh, to be the wider workspace. And you can just toggle it by hitting the toggle button. Um, automatically switch key. Uh, switch canvases after tweeting. This is a, a minor feature. Disable transitions. There's a bunch of transitions when you click on things. They they animate, as you can see. But you can disable that if it starts to tax your system. Now, rules. This is something very cool. I talked about. I briefly talked about TweetDeck and its ability to have groups. Rules are sort of similar. It allows you to filter your home canvas. Home canvas meaning your main feed of everybody. So. If there, and I think this is the this is probably going to be the main workflow for a lot of people. If there are people you want to exclude, um, one notable Twitterer or tweeter by the name of Robert Scoble, he gets a lot of flack for tweeting too much. So if you want to follow Robert Scoble, but you want to exclude him temporarily, like days like today where there's demo and he's tweeting a lot. You can say you you can exclude that person without actually unfollowing them. So you can just click on the plus sign here, and I'll add Scoble Iser. Did I spell his name wrong? Yeah, Scoble Iser. And what that does is that adds his name to a list there. Now, if I want to include people, I can do the same thing. Let's close this little window. I can do the same thing and inc include people. Like say, I want to to include. Uh, let's see, off the top of my head, Chris Perillo, uh, Insurgent. Uh, Strat, uh, where flies people in the fish twit. Oh, he's not. What are you in, on Twitter? Fish twit. I forget. Uh, I'm sorry. I just told you about your hand. Fish twit. Uh, who else? Kovacs. So these are just people that I just know off the top of my head. Okay, John Fisher. Thanks. And uh, you can see here that their names have now been inclusive. So if I were to apply, I go to the bottom. Oh, actually, it's right here. If I go here and I say apply rules, this will refresh my home stream and show only tweets from those people and it will exclude people from the other list that I've built. So that's pretty cool, right? Oh, actually, I didn't I didn't toggle exclude these users. Okay, I just learned something there. You can't do both at the same time. You can either include or you can exclude users. And it looks like I found a little defect here. It put everybody in the exclude or the include, even though I said include, that's a minor thing. You're probably going to use one of the other ones. So if, you, if you're going to exclude people, or you're going to include people. When I was using this for real, using it, I have a group in TweetDeck called Main. These are the main people I want to follow, and those are the people that I put in this list before I, I cleaned it out. Now to clean it out, you just hold down the Alt key and you click on the names, and they go away. Pretty easy, right? Or you can include only links. So if you're only interested in links that come from Twitter, you can toggle this and do apply rules. And then when you go to your home canvas, when it refreshes again, it'll show right now it's refreshing. Okay, now you see every tweet that I see here has a link. So you can just say, I don't wanna see any tweets that don't give me a link. Most times those are those are pretty juicy tweets. They're not just, oh, I'm, I'm washing my face with soap and water, or I'm going to the bathroom now, I'll be back in five minutes. That kind of thing. <laughs> You'll see things with only links. So these are cool rules that you can apply. Um, going back to the preferences, you can also change. Change will occur on the, okay, this is the canvas. You can also do international character support. You can do bigger text, other options here, uh, 24 hour time. So there's a bunch of things, notifications. It supports growl. You've probably seen uh, their the notifications coming at the top right. You can also apply sounds to this. There's a there's a sound you can uh, have, but I choose to mute it. Not too crazy about it. Um, also, here's my account settings. So I can come in here and I can change my about information. And uh, I can come into people here. And uh, when I select somebody in my home streams, let's say I want to see more about tech glance. It will take me to the people tab and show me their information. Here I can unfollow them, I can message them, or I can tweet. Now there's an away thing here. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I'm assuming it marks you away. I, I don't know why you would need that on Twitter, but uh, maybe it's a vacation message or something like that. Something I'll look into, but you guys will probably know what I'm talking about. So there's a home, there's a replies, saved, and search. And also you can come in here 
And this is a feature that I actually like and that I actually use it is the wider workspace. And you can see a lot more, and I just closed the window like an idiot. Let me open it back up. <laughs> you can see a lot more in Destroy Twitter when you show all three canvases at the same time. See, this is this is for people who have big monitors, a, bit, a lot of real estate. And um, people on netbooks, you may find Destroy Twitter to be a, a good option because it's only three panes. You can shrink it down to one, you can minimize it, and you get growl notifications. So it's not an application designed to be always in the foreground. So I like to think of Destroy Twitter as kind of like a mold between TweetDeck and Twirl. It's got the interface that I want Twirl to have, and it's got a singular pane. It can hide. It can work in the background. It can notify you. Uh, it's kind of designed to not be in the way. At the same time, you can flip a toggle and then turn it into this intrusive three pane interface like TweetDeck and then get your tweet on on Twitter. So this is my walkthrough slash tutorial slash opinion slash review <laughs> of Destroy Twitter. Now, I highly recommend you check it out. Again, the website is at destroytoday.com slash projects slash destroy twitter you can install it it works on mac linux and windows because it supports adobe air and I, i've i've heard some linux users have some some general success with it uh based on tweets i've saw um i can't speak for that because i don't have it installed on linux box but i do have it installed on the windows and a mac os 10 box works great all right this is borna from borna.tv i hope you enjoyed this fairly lengthy review of destroy twitter take care